I am Tracy Drain and I am the Deputy Chief Engineer for Juno. Over there is a model of the Juno spacecraft, which is on its way to Jupiter right now. That's just a one-quarter scale model over there. This is a full-scale model of one of the solar arrays. So there are three arrays just like this on board the spacecraft. Um, this is not a flight unit, so we're not sending it anywhere, but it's there for qualification purposes so we can do testing to make sure the real arrays are going to work. What you see here is actual solar arrays, and that's why it's a different color than these. This is the only segment that has real solar arrays on it. And if you were to count these solar cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, you'd get 6,000 of them on each of the three arms. And so we have to have arrays this big because when you get out to Jupiter, it's five times farther away from the sun than the Earth is. And the, the amount of sunlight drops with the square of the distance. So there's only one twenty-fifth the amount of light. Juno is going to discover a lot of things that we haven't been able to figure out with the earlier missions. First of all, it isn't orbiting in the uh, equator, equatorial plane. It's, it's a polar orbit. So it is going to be able to give us information about the poles that we've never had before. If you ever look at one of those globes of Jupiter with a pretty painting on it, the, the, the mid part of it is very detailed and the top and bottom look like kind of green blobs and that's why. So we'll be able to fill that in. We're also going to be able to study the magnetic field and the gravity field of the planet to give us a better sense of how the planet is structured inside. If you were to try to land on Jupiter, it's just a big gas ball, mostly hydrogen and helium. You would sink and sink and sink into the pressure and temperatures get so great you would be crushed like a grape and melted <laughs> to a nasty little blob. If you keep going, you get to this layer of liquid metal hydrogen where the pressure is so strong that the electrons are squeezed right off the atoms and they're free to flow. Then you have this huge flowing field of electrons, which is an electrical field. Even though Jupiter is 11 times wider across than the Earth is, it rotates once in 10 hours. And so that huge rotating electrical field generates this monster magnetic field. And we're trying to learn more about the structure of that magnetic field. We'll be able to do that with Juno also. And the one thing we'll be able to find out with uh, this microwave radiometer instrument, this is one of six of these antennas that are on board the spacecraft for that instrument. It'll help us figure out the global distribution of water vapor in the atmosphere. Scientists have a bunch of different theories about how Jupiter formed specifically, and the different theories tell you an estimate of how much water vapor you would expect to see, but we've never been able to measure that globally, so Juno is going to be able to do that, and it may teach us some really interesting things about general planetary formation.